Greetings, beloved of the Lord. It's a joy. It's day 31. By the grace of God, we are on Psalm 31. Hallelujah. What a joy that we are back on the fifth season. And also, for you who is with us for the first time, we thank God that it's a journey through the, the book, the scriptures, and in the book of Psalm 31, and combining with other six chapters of the Bible as we move on, as we learn, as we grow, as we move on to another level in the name of Jesus. We always commence by sharing in the Lord's table. At this stage, I assume that you are born again. You cannot share the Lord's table if you are not saved. You cannot. Uh, be able to start uh, with us well in this broadcast without giving your life to Christ. So today I do it a bit different. We commence by sharing the, 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 the sharing with the believers who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That as we take off, we will take off when we are born again. And if you join us at the end, I will refer you to the front of the video. The word of the Lord in Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Beloved, if you have not given your life to Jesus, then this journey of 150 days of Psalms will somewhat be a bit fruitless for you because it is meant to be for one who is ascending the hill of the Lord, one who is born again. And who is carrying on with the burden of the Lord. He says, take my yoke because it is easy and my burden is light in Matthew eleven twenty eight. So I want to pray with you especially that before even we share the communion, before we get along, that you are already born again. And if you are not born again, then this is how you do it. So pray with me this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone, the new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, we can proceed on now to pray for you. And also you can join us in the communion which we are going to be starting shortly in the name of Jesus. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23, it says, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he took the bread and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When, and then he said again, and he then he took the cup. And when he had taken the cup, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray for you who's recently born again and also pray for the communion and the bread. Father, we pray for the communion. We pray as we commence this broadcast that you'll open our eyes, that you'll minister to each one of us. That you truly be our refuge and that you will lead us by your righteousness. Father, we want to come against every pollution in the dream, in the mentality, spiritual attacks with the, the enemy has released upon your children. Father, we pray that you protect us and as we partake of this communion, that you refresh us. We thank you for the new believers. May you continue to strengthen them, even to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us partake in this wonderful bread and let us partake in the cup in the name of Jesus Of your Lord in 
the name of Jesus. If only they will wait. There's power in your name to bless. Give me ten resources. Heavenly supply. Hey! Wow. If only men would pray. Sound the trumpet. A limited resource. Hallelujah. We commence in the presence of God with Nathaniel Basse there with call on me. Psalm 31, we are talking about refuge, we are mentioning about refuge, we are going to the word of God for refuge. Psalm 31, for the director of music, a psalm of David, verse 1. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge, let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness, turn your ear to me, come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set before me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. Psalm 31, 6. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. Shalom, my sister Joyce. Welcome and invite others, share the video and let others also connect with us. Psalm 31, 7. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Ah, I love this one because it's connected to Psalm, Psalm, uh, Psalm 18, where it says that my feet, you brought me out to a broad place. Again, in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 20, it says he brought me into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. It's a joy to be in the refuge of the Lord, to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. What a high place, what a low place in place of worshipping God. The shelter, dwelling in the shelter of the Lord is the place where we ought to be and it's found in the lowest place where we lie into the presence of God. We are in the presence of God in a mighty highway. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. Verse 7. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to the enemy. But have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, O Lord. For I am in distress. My eyes grow weak. And with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief, my life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors. I am the dread of my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten by them as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. <laughs> Let my face shine. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Beloved, the unfailing love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I can come to a place of saying, I have tasted of the unfailing love of God. In my illness, he came through and rescued me and showed me his unfailing love. 
Psalm 31 verse 17. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and lie silent. Let the wicked be put to shame and lie silent in the grave. Let their lying lips be silenced with, for with pride and contempt. They speak arrogantly against the righteous. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. Hallelujah. Hey, I come to the store of goodness. I receive from the Lord's store of goodness today in the name of Jesus. For the word of the Lord says, how great is the goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you. As you are born again, as you are recently born again, there is a store of goodness. Because it comes when you fear God. It says, which you have stored up for those who fear you. Which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them. For the intrigues of men. In your dwelling, you keep them safe from the accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he has shown his wonderful love to me. <laughs> we see another type of love from God. There is the unfailing love and there is the wonderful love. I pray to you, I pray to you, my God, reveal your wonderful love to your children. Reveal your unfailing love to your children as they dwell in the shelter, as they dwell in your refuge. For your word says in Psalm 31, Praise be to the Lord, for he has showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a besieged city. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you had my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Verse 23 says, Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful. But the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. What a joy to be able to, you know, come to this wonderful knowledge of these two things that come from the refuge of God. The unfailing love of God, number one. And the wonderful love of God, number two. And number three, the goodness that he stores up for the faithful. It stops by telling us a command. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. May that be our portion today. As we continue with the journey of 150 days of Psalms. I believe, beloved, that this far that the Lord has brought us, he has been our rock and our fortress. The glory that was lost in your life is being restored as you daily commute with Him, as you daily move with Him, as you daily walk with Him, as you experience God in your matter every day. There is a new level. There is a lifting. You are not in the same place. There is a new place. There is a new level. There is a new level. There is a new level. Another level is coming. Another level is here in the name of Jesus. You cannot be in the same place. Proverbs 21, it says, The heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. He directs it as a watercourse, whichever way that it may go. It says that all a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Proverbs 2, 21, 2. And verse 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. It says in verse 3, To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To dwell in the refuge of the Lord is the most acceptable thing because there you will experience the unfailing love of God and there you will experience the wonderful love of God. It says in verse 4, Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the lamp of the wicked, will are seen. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. It says in verse 7, The violence of the wicked will drag them away. For they refuse to do what is right. Verse 8, The way of the guilty is devious, but the conduct of the innocent is upright. Verse 9, Better to live on the corner of the roof 
than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Verse 10. The wicked man craves evil. His neighbor gets no mercy from him. Verse 11. When a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. When a wise man is instructed, he gets knowledge. Verse 12. The righteous one takes note of the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin. Verse 13 of Proverbs 21. We are talking about the shelter, talking about the refuge. In Psalm 31, where we are reading, mentioning, and as I keep on recapping, it says, In the Lord I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. The direction where we are taking now of the word of God is the direction called righteousness. The other day I met someone who told me, the secret is Jesus. And I told him, no, Jesus is no secret in my life. It's no secret. You don't have to guess what, why I'm prosperous. You don't have to guess why I am the way I am. I am the way I am because of Jesus and I'm not hiding it anywhere. It's not a secret. Yesu si siri kwa maisha yangu. Siri ni Yesu mulisema. Lakini leo na kanusha. Yesu si siri katika zina la Yesu. Jesus is not a secret, beloved. It is not a secret to be hidden. He is not a silent listener in your dinner table. He is not an unseen guest. This word of God is not history. This word of God is now, it is tomorrow, and is the day after. That's the same way as our God is. He is the same yesterday, He is the same today, and He is the same in the future. Beloved, as we are journeying on in these scriptures, every day we come back to these words of truth and these words that are alive. These words that are not just culture. They are not just religion. These words that are alive. These words that you can look up in the map of the world and you will see the word of God alive. Everywhere, including a physical location where it was set and that is the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel, the nation of Iraq, the nation of Saudi Arabia, that area there, Turkey, all these places, including Kenya, which is mentioned as the rivers beyond Kush. And that's where I am broadcasting from. I give glory to God because His word is living. It is sweet. It is amazing. <laughs> Many times the enemy would want us to get derailed, but we will remain focused and in the refuge of the Lord. Because when we are in the refuge of the Lord, there is no weapon fashioned against you that shall prosper. The Lord himself will cause all your enemies to be scattered. He says in verse 14, But I trust in you, Lord. In Proverbs, uh, in Psalms 31, 14. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. When the enemy is trying to come in like a flood, he will be scattered in the name of Jesus Christ. He will not prevail. He will not prevail, I speak. Continues to say in verse 13 of Proverbs 21. If a man shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out, and not be remembered, not be answered. In verse 14, A gift given in secret soothes anger, and a bribe concealed in the clock pacifies great wrath. It says, when justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Verse 16, A man who strays from the path of understanding comes to rest in the company of the dead. Beloved, every day as we walk in the spirit, there is a place called the company of the dead. It is not necessarily of dead people, but it is a company of the dead. There is a, there is a particular place you may find yourself and you are in the company of the dead. In the book of Psalm 49 verse 14 we will see, it says, Like sheep that are destined for, for the grave, the death will feed on them. The upright will rule over them in the morning. Their forms will decay in the grave, far from their princely mansions. There is a place that is called the company of the dead, that is found from men and women who stray from the path of, the, of understanding. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Verse 17. 
Proverbs 21. It says, He who loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and oil will never be rich. Verse 18. It says, The wicked come, the wicked become a ransom for the righteous, and the unfaithful for the upright. Verse 19. It says, Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and ill tempered wife. Verse number 21. In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Proverbs 21, 21. He who pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. In verse 22. A wise man attacks the city of the mighty. And pulls down the stronghold in which they trust. Verse 23. It says, He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. You need to call in the guards of the mouth and the tongue. You have them. That's why the word of God says, He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps help himself from calamity. So there is an element of guarding that you must come in from within you, which is through the word of God. When you are listening to the word of God, you will guard your mouth and your tongue from calamity. It will not speak that which does not glorify God. It will not say something. You don't need to swear for people to believe you. You don't need to curse. You don't say, oh, you know. You don't need to say any of that anymore. Because you are changed. You are transformed. You are not cursing like your community curses. There's a particular place I travel and everybody, including the preachers around there, were using the name of the Lord to say something. Say, ah, 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 you do not have to curse. You don't have to swear in the name of the Lord for me to believe what you're saying. Proverbs 21, 24 says, The proud and arrogant man, Mocha is his name. The sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. Verse 26, all day long he craves for more, but the righteous give without sparing. Proverbs 21, 28, a false witness will perish, and whoever listens to him will be destroyed forever. Proverbs 21, 29, a wicked man puts up a bold front, but, the, but an upright man gives thought to his ways. Hmm. There again we see the God that is within us. He who guards his mouth and his tongue is kept from calamity. Again, the wicked man puts up, a, again, a false witness will perish. And whoever listens to him will be destroyed forever. That is Proverbs 21, 28. A wicked man puts up a bold front, but an upright man gives thought to his ways. So this is a very, very key verse that we also saw in Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14 verse 8. And I pray for you that as we read the word of God, you will be rich of scripture. You will speak scripture after scripture after scripture. That whenever you speak with people, you are speaking scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture and applying it in your life. Because the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the folly of fools is deception. A wicked man puts a bold front, but a upright man gives thought to his ways. You will not start defending yourself so much, but you are going to use wisdom by applying it. That before you make that crucial decision, please go back. Don't say, I read the Bible in the morning. Just pick it up again. Start looking it up again. You'll see the solution for what you want to do. For in Psalm Proverbs 21, 30, it says there is no wisdom. There is no insight. There is no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Whether they think that they can try and sneak in something through a disease in the world. There is no wisdom. There is no insight. There is no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Verse 31 says, The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory rests with the Lord. 
Victory rests with the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. That is where we are going, beloved. What a joy. What a joy. I'm so excited because it's Friday and it's exactly 3 a.m. in the South Pacific time and it is 2 p.m. in Kenya, Nairobi and it is actually exactly um, around 4 p.m. in South Korea. We thank God that we are recording this live at a gate of time where it's, you know, the Lord is helping us. It's only Him who can help us, beloved, to make this proclamation. Sometimes we don't know how He directs, but He directs and we follow. When the enemy tries to come in like a flood, He will raise a standard. His unfailing love, His wonderful love will come and destroy every attack that the enemy is trying to bring. You'll try and bring an attack. He'll try and bring the attack. Try and bring the attack, but he will not prevail against you. He will not prevail against you. I, pre I prophesy. He will not prevail against you. He will not prevail against you. He will not prevail in the name of Jesus. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1. It says, As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Verse 2. The heart of the wise inclines to the right. By the heart of the fool to the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 4. If a ruler's anger is against you, don't leave your post. Calmness can lay great errors to rest. I'm telling you, my sister Joyce, as you are pursuing God in your area, he will release scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture of how and when that matter is solving it. You'll read it and suddenly come to knowledge. Wow! Wow! This word is alive. We give glory to God. It says again in Acts, Ecclesiastes 10, 5, it says, There is an evil that is seen under the sun, the sort of error that rises up from a ruler. Fools are put in many high positions. While the rich occupy the poor and low ones, I have seen slaves on horseback and princes on foot. Whoever digs a pit may fall into it. Whoever breaks through a wall may be beaten by a snake. Whoever quarrels stones, whoever quarries stones may be injured by them. Whoever splits logs may be endangered by them. If the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed. But with skill will bring success. Verse 11. If a snake bites before it is charmed, there is no profit for the charmer. Verse 12. Words from a wise man's mouth are gracious, but a fool is consumed by his own lips. Mm. Mm. At the beginning, his words are folly. At the end, they are wicked madness. And the fool multiplies words. No one knows what is coming. Who can tell him what will happen after him? The message of this is reduce your words when you're speaking to others. In the refuge of the Lord, reduce your words. Do not have many words, because fools multiply words. No one can know what is coming. Across the world, from 20, 2001, 2000, 2001, when we had 9-11, September 11 in America, the world changed totally. The landscape of the world and the nations changed. No longer could you walk into an airport with a belt. You have to remove the belt. You have to remove the shoes. You have to remove probably a lot of things before you get in because they want to check. Do you have explosives on you? Do you have something that can cause trouble to more travelers on the air? Now they have even made it more difficult for you to travel by air. Because every time you need to show a certificate that you are clean, you don't have a disease. 
Every time you have to show people that look I am not sick. Every time you have to do that. A couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, that was not the case. But now today, the world is trying to access eternal life by what they can do, by the things they can do. Let me tell you what, you cannot access eternal life but only through Jesus Christ. You cannot access Jesus Christ through your leader, the leader of your church, the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the prophet, whoever the person leads in your church, even through Malcolm David. You cannot go through Jesus. You cannot get to Jesus through a man. And every multiplication of words is foolishness. Anybody trying to show you a difficult route to salvation is leading you astray. No matter how many miracles they, they work, even if they do many miracles twice over, the scripture tells us that even the false prophet will come with miracles. So miracles for me is not a basis of whether one is called by God or not. It's not a basis. The basis should be, is it in the name of Jesus? And is it through Jesus? And is it through him alone? If it is by any other means, how I dress, how I look, where Satan has a headquarter, where he does not have, where he is at, it is not consequential. Whether the fruit was an apple or it was a mango, the forbidden fruit does not matter whether it was a mango or an apple. What it matters is that that was called disobedience. And that is what we need to know, that Adam and Eve disobeyed God. It should end there. If God gives you another revelation, we praise the Lord. But that should not be the source of our getting into eternity. Eternity has a location where we go through the refuge. Because without the refuge, listen, it says, it says that the Lord has made you into a polished arrow under the shadow, under the hiding you, is hidden you and made you into a polished arrow. Polished arrow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Polished arrow. I am a polished arrow of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am a polished arrow. You are a polished arrow. When you remain in the shelter of the Lord, you are a perished arrow. Emotions cannot get to God. I want to tell you for free. Even if you roll in the mud, you cry, you climb trees, you come back. The only thing that touches God is your faith. Is the one that pleases God. You can cut your body. You can eat stones. You can go climb the top of the highest mountain. But you will not reach God by what you can do, beloved of the Lord. Even your fasting cannot get you to where God is without faith. It's important for me to mention these things. Because a lot of churches began the year with the fasting uh, for 21 days. Now after 21 days, what next? What next? Are we going back to the pattern of the world? Or have we become polished arrows? We must become polished arrows. Polished arrow. I am a polished arrow of the Lord. I walk in the polished as in Isaiah 49 verse 2. If at all you want to remember that scripture. Isaiah 49 verse 2. My sister Ginger. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand. He hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. I am in the quiver of the Lord. That's why he says again in Psalm 128 that blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. This is the Lord himself whose quiver is full of polished arrows. That is you. He knows that when he holds Malcolm David, people are going to memorize scripture. People are going to meditate on scripture. People are going to study scripture more. People are going to hear the scripture more. People are going to study the scripture more. People are going to meditate on the scripture more. Because this is what you have been called to do, to be a polished arrow in the hands of the Lord, when you are in the shadow of his hand, when you are in the refuge of the Lord, when he hides you, he makes you into a polished arrow and conceals you into his own quiver. 
Hey, glory to God. I'm excited because of this. Because I know that I'm a polished arrow when I dwell in the refuge of the Lord. The word of God says that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 91. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. It says, a fool's work wearies him. He does not know the way to town. Woe to you, O land, whose king was a servant and whose princess feast in the morning. But blessed are you, O land, whose king is of noble birth and whose princess eat at a proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. If a man is lazy, the rafters sag. If his hands are idle, the house leaks. A fool, a feast is made for laughter, and wine makes the heart merry, makes life merry, but money is the answer for everything. Verse 20. It says, don't revile the king even in your thoughts, or curse the rich in your bedroom, because a bird of the air may carry your words, and a bird on the wing may report what you say. Beloved, what a joy. We go on now to the book of Exodus. Standing by, waiting for the call, calling for the ones who pray. Hey, I have paid the price for every victory. Just be seen. Hallelujah. Nathaniel verse Exodus chapter 31 verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Hallelujah. I pray that we come to a place where the Lord says to Joyce, the Lord says to Malcolm David, the Lord says to Ginger, the Lord says to Peter, the Lord says to Andrew, the Lord said to Moses. See, I have chosen Bezalel. Son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. Beloved, I want to just mention here that this is a very powerful prayer point you can make for yourself, even as this year commences. This is something that we are praying about as we Continue today is day 31 as we continue to pray and fast. And this season we thank God and trust Him that is able to help us to maintain a lifestyle of fasting and prayer throughout season 5. The beginning with the first two books, that is like 70 days of fasting. And I know God is faithful because He's doing it. Today is day 31, and if you have been struggling, may the Lord give you grace, and may you focus, may you continue to look up. But notice that the Spirit of God 
is a gift from him to be our helper, to be our comforter. And it did not begin after the New Testament. Even in the days of old, there were people who were filled with the Spirit of God. That's why such a man is called Baziel, Bazalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur. I pray for you, for the Bezalel anointing to come upon your life. That this anointing that he had received, where well, he was filled with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. Lord, I need that anointing I receive in Jesus' name. Grant me that craftsmanship. Grant me that creativity. Grant me that creativity, Lord, my Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for that creativity in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I release it into the nations in Jesus' name. Amen. Right there, I've shared with you a moment where you can grow how you read your Bible. Don't just read it like a book. Read it as now, happening now, happening today, happening right here, happening for me, happening for my children, happening right now. That as the Lord filled Bazalel, son of Uri, with the, uh, as, as the Lord filled Bazalel, the son of Ur, in the tribe of, Gen of, of Judah, he filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill and ability and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. To make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. It is the same way that the Lord will fill you with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts. Whatever it is you are doing, the Lord fill you with the Spirit of God, with skill, with ability, and knowledge. May the Lord give you skill, ability, and knowledge. God give you skill, ability, and knowledge in the name of Jesus as you dwell in His shelter, as you dwell in His refuge, as you dwell in His shelter, as He puts His hand over you and says her i have made you into a polished arrow and put you in the quiver the quiver is the one that you put at the back of the archer and the archer carries the bow then he goes to fight using the bow moreover this is another verse verse number six it says moreover i have appointed ohol liab son of Ahishamak, the side, the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything I have commanded you. Verse 7. The tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent. Verse 8. The table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand, and all its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, the basin with its stand, and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his son when they serve as priests. And the anointing oil, the franken, fragrant incense for the holy place, they are to make them just as I commanded you. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Whoever does any work on that day must be cut off from the people. For six days, work is to be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. 
When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the testimony, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. Now it's getting exciting. That Moses was given the tablets of the testimony inscribed by the hand of God, by the finger of God himself. Refuge. Make the Lord your refuge. And say with Daniel, say with David, as he says in, in, in Psalm 31, say with him, and come back here and make sure you copy it down so that you get it to learn twice. It says, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Because, come, come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge. A strong, a strong fortress to save me. We see about the Sabbath is a very serious thing about God. Rest is part of the spiritual discipline. In as much as you work hard, you must rest hard also. Because if you don't rest, then the enemy will take advantage of that aspect that you don't rest. Rest in the Lord. This was a serious, serious command of Sabbath. That if you only if you broke it, it deserved death. Will the capitalist world have survived? This commandment. Would you have survived this commandment of the Sabbath? Are you surviving it? Are you observing the Lord's Sabbath? The Lord's Sabbath now in the new dispensation is not in a day as called today. But it's in him as the Lord of the Sabbath. You must enter into rest in the Lord. You must enter into rest there. Colossians. Colossians 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Colossians 1.3. I just see Colossians. I see this wonderful letter of Colossians. It's, it's a beautiful location. Great location. That's why it's called Colossians. It was set for the Colossi, the people in Colossi, the people of the Colossians, the people there. But now we apply it for ourselves because the word of God I told you, it is now, it is, it is yesterday, it is today, it is forever. That is what the word of God is. It's applicable to us yesterday. It's applicable to us today. It's applicable to us tomorrow. The Bible is past, present, future. That's what you need to read it as. We always thank God. Verse 3. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Because we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. The love, the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven, that you have already heard about the word of truth, the gospel, that has come to you all over the world. This gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear servant, who is a fellow faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and was also told of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with the, with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that we may have a great endurance and patience 
and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Verse 13. For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn from all creation. This is where you, free, you find us declaring every day, the firstborn of all creation. He's also the firstborn from the dead. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have him in the fullness, in all his fullness, dwell in him. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you are alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has rescued you. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Whatever accusations are in your life, I want you to understand that through Jesus Christ you are reconciled. You are reconciled through his blood shed on the cross. That once you are alienated from God, even today, many people are living as aliens from God. But it's only believing in Jesus Christ that will bring you from a place of an alienation to a place of knowledge, a place of the refuge, a place of in the shelter of the Most High. A place where it says, by now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. In the name of Jesus. Ha! It doesn't matter what kind of accusation you have carried. It doesn't matter what kind of blemishes you have carried. I want to tell you today that as long as you come into the Lord Jesus Christ by your faith, you will be reconciled to him. You will be reconciled. The Lord is reconciling you. It doesn't matter whether you are a jail convict. It doesn't matter the convict. It doesn't matter whether you are a drug dealer. I once prayed with a drug dealer, and he did not know what to do now with his work. I told him, "You know what to do. Don't get the supply, and what you have, don't sell it. Just destroy, it. because now you are reconciled through His blood shed on the cross." Another one asked me, what do I do with my collection of expensive wine and alcohol? I said to him, this is not for any way, but you need to destroy it. That's the only way. How expensive can it be? How expensive can it become? What is more expensive than the blood of the living God? Through his son, he died for us. God had a plan when man failed. When man fell from glory, you will see that the journey of trying to make the Israelites a redemptive nation did not work well. That even Moses, after getting uh, uh, tablets of the testimony to come down with them from the mountain, he crushes them, he destroys them. He is a man. We cannot take that excuse and say, look, I am only a man. Uh -uh. It does not work like that. We must be free from every blemish and free from every accusation by being reconciled by Christ's physical body. If you take those expensive things and say, I cannot be able to destroy this wine. This wine is very expensive. I would rather expen uh, exchange it for money. Well... We cannot start going into those details. But what is there is this, beloved of the Lord. That the Holy Spirit 
the one we've read, we are reading here in the book of Exodus 31, that filled this wonderful man called Belai. Uh, let me read it again. Exodus 31. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Exodus 31. It says that Bezalel, son of Uri, that he was filled with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. That this is the kind of spirit that now dwells here upon the earth. That God will give you, let me tell you, beloved, the wonderful things, the good things, that's why I say that God lays in store goodness for those who are faithful to him. In Psalm 31, we read and he said that you hold goodness in store. You hold goodness. He says, you hold how abundant are the good things that you are stored up for those who fear you, that be stored in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. That we come to a place of knowledge that yes, when we sing the song and the hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. When you make that prayer, when you sing that song, you need to come to Colossians 1.22 that now he who has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. By faith. Verse 23 says, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, and not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you had and that has been proclaimed for e to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a servant. Verse 24 of First Col Colossians 1. Now I rejoice in what I suffered for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in regard to Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, which is, his bo which is, his, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. In the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations and is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 28. We proclaim him, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. To this end, I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. I want you to know how much I am struggling for you and those who are at Laodicea, and for all who have not met me personally. Verse 2. This is uh, chapter 2. But we'll read that chapter 2 tomorrow. Let me just end at Colossians 1.29. It says, To this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works within me. We go now to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Let me tell you, Ephesians chapter 1 is a prayer. Oh my God. This is a prayer that I remember in season 2, we prayed it every day for 30 days. Every day we prayed the prayer of Ephesians. Hey! God did incredible things and is still doing that because we have purpose to go reading the book of Ephesians every single time. When we reach Ephesians 6, we come back to 1. So it's a privilege that you are here with us in the name of Jesus. We give glory to God for what he's doing. We give him praise. We give him honor. <laughs> We go to the book of uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, 
to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me pause here and show you the introduction of that wonderful book. We have read the book of uh, Colossians and now it starts. Colossians starts by saying, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and, the, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the book of Ephesians, the Lord says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. This is not addressed to Timothy only in the church, but it is addressed to the saints in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus, which now today we are the saints. We are the Ephesians today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every kind of blessing. In Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Christ, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, and to praise to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things, hey, hallelujah, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, in the refuge of the Lord is the place of the choosing. It cannot be found outside Jesus. It says in him you were chosen. In him you were also chosen. Having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1.13 And you also were included in Christ, in the refuge, in the quiver, as a polished arrow, in the shadow of the Lord, receiving the good things stored up for the faithful. Hey, beloved, the word of the Lord says to us, In him we were also chosen, and having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you are marked in him with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now listen to this thanksgiving and prayer. And I want you to compare the two prayers, the prayer of the Colossians and the prayer of the Ephesians. And make some prayer points out of that as you are praying. It says, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks to you for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
that you may know him better. I pray also that the, the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And this incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated us with him on the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Beloved, this prayer is answered in the Lord, in the refuge, in the quiver, in the shadow, in the cleft of his arm. It is there that the Lord is going to answer you, in the place where you dwell and you purpose to remain in the Lord and to be a worshiper of the Lord, to worship him in truth, to remain in the Lord, to earnestly beat yourself daily, to obey the words of the Lord, to read the scriptures constantly, to fill your thoughts and your mindset with the word of God, to look at the world through the lens of the Lord Jesus Christ, to love people, to reduce your words so that your words are not multiplied as the words of the fool, to guard your lips Inside the refuge, you guard your lips, you guard your tongue. What you eat and what you say. Very important. That's why it says he who guards his lips and his tongue. It's not only about words, it's also about what you are eating. If you eat a lot of junk food, it's going to show up on your body. It's going to affect your physical body with a sickness and you will not get out of that sickness. Your body will succumb to the illness easily. So we ought to check what we are eating. Lips. Tongue. Very dangerous elements. Those two. We go on to the book of Revelation 12 as we come to a close. The word of the Lord says, A great and wondrous sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in vain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon, with seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. He still swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared to her for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. Now let me pause here and mention something to you. About God's word. It is the past, present and future. This word that we are reading here. Is a complete book revelated to the John the Apostle. John the Apostle is the one who this book was revealed to. From Genesis to Revelation, the Holy Spirit is at work speaking about Jesus, speaking about the end time, speaking about the creation. Never do you read a Bible book thinking of it as history. 
or a novel, you will fail. You must read the word of God as present, as past, present, and future. That it is active. It has something for me to apply today. Right now, I apply something about this word. That I choose to make God my refuge. In my marriage, he will be my refuge. In my business, he will be my refuge. He is my refuge even now. He's my refuge. I'm ready to pay the price of waiting on the Lord. Because he remains my refuge. And the things that I desire, he will fulfill those things. According to his riches in glory. What a joy it is to remain in the presence, the shelter of the Most High. What a joy it is to remain in the shadow of the things of God. Coming to him with thanksgiving, knowledge and being in his presence. That this occurrence we are reading already happened. It's not waiting to happen. It already happened. That there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. And he was not strong enough. Then they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil. Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth. And his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say. Now has come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their life so much as to shrink from death. Therefore, Rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea. Because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury. Because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth. He pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of the great eagle. So that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the desert where she would be taken care of for a time times and half a time out of the serpent's reach then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away from the torrent by the torrent sweep her away with the torrent but the earth Help the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and the testimony of Jesus. Beloved, I pray continually that God will fill you with the knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that his spirit gives in Jesus' name. I also pray that God will help us as we continue in the journey of 150 days of Psalms. I also pray for you that God will continue to reveal himself to you as you dwell in his shelter. Isaiah 42 verse 9, 49 verse 2 That the Lord has made you as a sharpened sword has made your tongue like a sharpened sword. And he has made you and turned you into a polished arrow. And that dwells in his quiver. That is your portion. That is my portion. I praise God and I give him the praise. Shalom. May the Lord favor you. May the Lord shine his light upon you. Thank you so much for uh, Team Mission Monday. As the Lord enables us to move on to another place. As the Lord helps us to Continue to share his grace and his majesty. The Lord bless you. The Lord favor you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you for watching. Shalom.